Hello and welcome back again. I'm Dr. Mukh Mohit Singh. In this session, we are going to talk about the number of cases. In the previous section, we talked about how to interpret the number of deaths for any particular country. So before talking on the deaths, there might be different uh, scenarios which might be happening in different countries. So now let us have a brief word about understanding the number of cases for different countries. So this thing uh, we already had seen in the previous video as, as well that today on 31st of March 2020 we have unfortunately witnessed 8,500,000 cases of COVID-19 across the world with 41,000 uh, deaths and the total number of new cases reported from any country from the world is 61,000. And the 61,000 has been broken up that 60% belong to 3-4 countries, 40% belong to the rest part of the world. Italy was one of the country which was among the top countries of uh, contributing to the COVID cases across the globe. But now uh, on 31st of March, we have seen that Italy has slightly come down. But the disturbing factor is about Spain. It's the disturbing factor about France and uh, the next uh, countries which would be in uh, probably which can be in trouble or in terms of case reporting or in terms of mortalities would be anything from asia or from africa or from the developing part of the world so let's get going and let's see how to expect numbers if you talk about how to expect numbers i think it will be very primitive or premature of me to talk to you in terms of what is an epidemic or what is a pandemic most of you already must be knowing what is pandemic and epidemic. These are simple words now for everyone. Let's understand the basic science of epidemic. That's where the problem is that you see the number of cases being reported from a country. Does it mean that the problem is there in a country or does it mean that the country is probably in a different time zone? So let's just understand what are the basic epidemic types. The epidemic types could broadly be of many epidemic types. We can have first is we can have a point source where a single person is there and that single person is infected another person or that single point is infecting another person so that's a point source epidemic it usually is seen in in food borne outbreaks or in cases like uh, uh, food poisoning or things like this where one batch is not correct or in vaccine reactions so that is usually taken as a point source because that's a single point or a single nidus it usually does not spread from person to person that spread is not there we have another type of spread that is known as propagated epidemics. So if you talk about a propagated epidemic, it actually goes from one person, it, that is known as the patient zero, and the case zero will spread to let's say four cases. So you have these four cases. Now this four cases will give to four more cases and each one will give to four more cases so total you'll have four 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 sixteen so one person gives to four four will give to sixteen cases these sixteen people will give to five five more and probably the epidemic is going from this point to this point and then to this point and then to this point it is rising in exponential numbers in simple words one case will give rise to 10, 10 will give rise to 400, 400 will give rise to 40,000, 40,000 will go into lakhs. This is known as exponential transition or this is known as exponential doubling. It is specifically seen in propagated epidemics. So if you talk about this propagated epidemic, what is the curve pattern we see? The curve pattern we see, epidemic curve pattern that we see is that the epidemic stays low and then there is a threshold break even point and then the epidemic burst. These are the number of cases and this is in time. The epidemic just burst. But then the burst is there or it may immediately come down or it can plateau a little bit or it may come down like this or it may come down like this or it may come down like that but eventually the very important point i'm going to discuss with you eventually this epidemic curve has to decline the rate of decline of this epidemic curve actually depends upon two things it depends on what is the killing power of this disease what if one was given to 40, 40 was given to 400 at certain point when the people start dying, when there is no more susceptible population. So at that point, the people, the curve will tend to decline. So probably what is the 
causative factor of decline, it is probably mortality. But the curve will decline. There is another school of thought on this. The decline can also happen that if one gives to 40, 40 gives to 100, 100 gives to 400, and what if the people start recovering? In simple words, if let us say this is a jug, let us say you have a jug of water, and in that jug, people keep on falling, and either people get cured or people die. But people don't remain in this jug. So eventually, what is going to happen, people who get cured, they will not be transmitting from person to person because the innate property of a propagated epidemic is transformation, is a transfer of the, of the pathogen or the organism from a person to person, right? So in case either people die or in case they get cured, eventually this has to decline. So either people are killed or people are cured. In terms of cure, they could also spread something called as herd immunity. So the rate at which at the epidemic curve will decline will be dependent on killing power. It will be dependent on transmissibility or the communicability. It will also be dependent on the herd immunity factors. So primarily, the decline has to be there. It is not a matter of if the pandemic is going to start or not start or if the pandemic is going to decline or not decline. The concern is when will it decline? So let's talk on these terms now. So do not take any country on that particular point. You should learn, you should, you, you should have that capacity to understand the trend rather than the point. So if you have understood this, that the curve is going to decline but when is what is teaching us in science that's what is the specialization of epidemiology and that's what is the specialization of preventive medicine so let's have a word on this if i have plot a curve on the number of these are the green ones are the recovered cases or the cured cases these are the number of cured cases and the red curve you can see is the number of deaths so if you see the number of deaths and the closed on the cured cases you can have a high cure or higher recoveries and you witness the same time you witness the lesser deaths what i mean to say is that the number of people in that jug are constant if the number of people start coming is constant number of people living and number of people killed and number of people cured is constant taking this the number of people with the disease will remain constant so that's what this graph means so a lot of uh, people had queries on this what are the linear curves or the logarithmic curves incidence versus prevalence curves and growth factor this is what fascinates me actually the incidence and the prevalence curves it is a very fascinating concept i wish i was uh, able to explain it much more lucidly and clearly but anyways i'll try my level best to have a have a have a baseline conversation with you let's talk about the linear and the logarithmic curves this is a, a, a chart a graph that i have uh, taken from courtesy uh, worldometers.info and it has been accessed online on 31st of March 2020. So I've taken the total coronavirus cases in the United States and uh, you can see there is something called as a linear presentation or a logarithmic presentation. So if I see the linear presentation up goes the curve. So unfortunately we see a, a steep rise in the curve. So that's what is a propagated epidemic. It tells you what it tells you two things that the curve is going very steep. The, the slope of the curve is particularly steep. It tells you that this is not a point source epidemic. It has to be person to person transmission. That means it has to be transmitting, going on from person to person with a very high communicability factor. And that is where the number comes called as the basic reproduction number. So the basic reproduction numbers tell you actually when with the cases explode. So the basic reproduction number was estimated, it's a mathematical term, so it's estimated to be around 2.5 to 3.5, however, it, it will keep on changing based on the total quantum of population that we have which is spreading the disease. If you just go back to this curve, this is one of the most essential things for us to understand. It tells you about the quantum of uh, population which is going to spread the disease. So. If you see these uh, linear curves, it just tells you that there is a steep incline. 
but what does it tell you that this cases will go like this will it go keep on going like this or it will go like this or it will go like this or it will come down immediately we don't know how to assess that so try understanding that what is there on the vertical axis on the y axis you can see that there is 50000 100000 150000 200000 this is known as a linear scale let me just switch from linear to logarithm so let us go into the log logarithmic case a scale of the same united states data of the same date the same number of cases till 30th march have been uh, shown here but now can you see the vertical axis the vertical axis is one case 10 case 100 case 1000 case 10000 case 100,000 case and a million case it is exponential numbers it is going in logarithmic numbers so a logarithm chart or a graph is going to uh, explain you much more in perspective it is going to help you understand much more in a lucid in in lucidly in real time that what is happening to the cases what i understand is that the slope of curve in this area and the slope of curve in this area and the slope of curve in this area is different can you see the slope of the curve you can see the slope of the curve is different so this is a very vital information that we get from logarithmic curves it tells you that what is the probability or how to regress on a linear line this is the regression models that we see on logarithmic models and based on these regression models we can actually predict the infectious capacity of a pathogen to infect the susceptible individuals based on which we come up with certain numbers a typical example is from italy when i plot the logarithmic curves from italy you can see that the slope of curve was rapidly high it was like this inclined and then it goes slow it goes slow and it goes slow it tells you the effect of lockdown it tells you the effect of social distancing it tells you the effect of government measures it tells you the effect of public health measures it tells you almost everything the country had witnessed during that horrible time of maybe the march initial part of march similar things happened in china and similar are going to happen in almost every country that is what the predict predictions are or that is what unfortunately i have to say the predictions are next is i would like to talk about a very fascinating point about incidence and prevalence curves it's not very much available online but i still found out some of the resources on this incidence and prevalence see according to me the number of new cases number of new cases with time how many new cases you're going to get with time that's important and that's that's fairly understandable everybody understands that but i have something more to tell that the chances for a country to increase the infectious capacity or to increase a burst or to see, witness an explosion in cases will be dependent on let us say that this is the jug and this is the new people coming in it is dependent on the number of people who are disease at that particular time because who's 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 giving you the new cases let us say this is the new cases so who is giving you the new cases it is this prevalent population the present population which is giving you the new cases the new cases are also called as incidence cases the present cases are also called as prevalent cases so basically in a communicable disease like covid 19 the incidence cases are primarily given by the prevalent cases the more number of prevalence you have the more number of incidence you're going to get the incidence is a factor determined by the prevalence and the prevalence is determined by the incidence they go hand in hand they're strongly going hand in hand so let's have a curve let's see what happens if i draw the incidence or the prevalence that is what is technical terms but uh, uh, many of you might not be using these technical terms so we use the new cases versus the total confirmed cases i should add over here these are the confirmed cases because i don't know how many cases are there in reality if you would have seen my previous videos you would appreciate that the real cases are much higher than the reported cases so let's have a look at this so there you go can you see that on the on the y axis on the vertical axis or on the standing axis the new confirmed cases are jumping in times of exponential 10 100 
10,000 and 100,000. So it says exponential that is a logarithmic scale has been used. Then from 10 to 100 again logarithmic scale on this as well. This data has been taken from COVID 2019 trends minute physics and you can see that the trend of new cases by the confirmed cases is fairly on uh, the same slope. But what you can witness over here is that in certain times you can see that the cases have increased but now they are showing a slight dent that is the prevalence is almost same but the new cases are not coming that means either they are dead or they are cured but they are not transmitting this is the effect of social distancing or lockdown so you can see that probably if the incidence someday tends to decrease then only you're going to decrease the prevalence so in times to come what is your focus is your focus to decrease the prevalence yes of course it is to decrease the prevalence that's the main thing but how to decrease the prevalence it is to decrease the incidence how to touch the incidence it is to stop the chain of transmission how to stop the chain of transmission it is to do lockdowns or social distancing that is the only way to cut the chain of transmission this is for a uh, uh, country india we can see that the total number of cases up they go then there was a slight stable kind of plateau phase and then up they go and then again up they go and uh, currently we may be witnessing a plateau god willing we should be but uh, anyways uh, the expected numbers are slightly on a higher side and the time will be telling us on what cases we see in india but uh, this is a logarithmic curve beautiful curve between the number of new cases and the number of current existing cases that is the reported cases so the next is uh, let's move forward and talk about the trajectory of uh, covid-19 cases on 30th of march 2020 for different countries so it's the same curve we are again going on logarithmic scales we are seeing trying to see the exponential uh, growth in the data in the numbers and for different countries so what is the take home message the take home message is that all the countries can you see that follow the same trajectory the trajectory does not change that is the communicability of the virus is static. That means the potential to spread from the prevalent cases towards the incident cases or in simple words, the prevalent, uh, the chances of the virus, COVID-19 virus to spread from the confirmed cases to the new cases is static. It does not change with country to country. The, the, the number of cases that were there in Iran in week one were three cases. Three went to 150, 150 went to I think around uh, 700, 700 increased to 1000, uh, to 2000, 2000, 6000, 6000, 25000 in five weeks. The transmittability of uh, cases in Iran is equal to the transmittability of cases in Germany is equal to the cases, the, the number of cases in Italy, it has been equal in US, it has been equal in India. We test it, we don't test it. That is a separate game. The number of cases, the mathematics say, the stats say, the, the chances of communication, the chances of communicability or the spread of the virus is static. That is what this uh, incidence and the prevalence curve say. So whatever say, we test it, we don't test it. Because testing costs money. Testing is not easy. Testing requires money. Testing requires manpower. So I'm not, I'm not saying that testing should have been done. What if you would have tested it at the end of the day is just a flu. So you don't want to spend your whole finances on testing. It depends on country to country. I'm not promoting testing. I'm not saying the, I'm not criticizing any country. What my point is that the public health should be, uh, uh, should be informing or you should be informed that the trajectory is same. It does not vary from country to country. The virus is same. The people are same. We are all humans. The mankind is same. The chances of communicability is same. So it all depends on us how we interpret these numbers. If you talk about this, another scenario, this is, you see the total number of cases on one vertical axis or the Y axis. On the X axis, we see the days in the, since the 100 total confirmed cases and we see the doubling time. So again, my uh, uh, thanks for thanks for the old world data .org for letting uh, this uh, data online and to the visual capitalist from where I have taken this data. What I have understood in this graph, as you can see, is that every 10 days, every five days, 
every two days and double cases every day. Most of the countries which have shown a rampant increase in the number of cases, I told you the number of cases is not absolute. The number of cases will depend on the total number of confirmed cases in the area. So the number of cases which are rapidly increasing, they are usually in between three days to five days. So you can see that this zone between two days to five days contain maximum countries. Very few countries like Turkey is there, which is on one side. It has less than two days doubling time. Very few countries also have more than five days or up to seven, eight days of doubling time. That is Singapore and, and Japan. But most other countries like India, like Australia, like Canada, like South Korea, Switzerland, Germany, Iran are in that early phase of doubling time. What does it mean? It means they are in the early stages of the epidemic curve. They are yet to achieve the peak. Peak is yet to be achieved. And then once the peak is achieved, then the peak will come down as we are seeing probably in, uh, in uh, Italy or uh, thankfully in Italy. And thankfully, we have seen that in China as well. And South Korea is also doing uh, doing uh, pretty well in terms of containment of disease. And uh, the hats off to the testing facilities in South Korea and in Germany, because uh, very few areas, uh, public health would regard that the testing facility in few countries have been enormous and the testing facility has been just outstanding. So last is, let's talk about the growth factors. What do I mean by the growth factors? The growth factor is the number of new cases, the number of new cases in one day or let's say today, divided by the number of new cases yesterday. So the, the, this type of uh, ratio, is known as the growth factor. It's not the doubling time, it is the growth factor that how much is the infection rate growing in an area. So we generally see that the infection rate is kind of a very small minute changes you need to observe in this graph that the infection rate is almost standard on this red line. So the infection rate with minor fluctuations or variations up and down around this red line is there. This red line corresponds to a value of one. So the growth factor, whenever it will go from when the trend, I'm not saying the point, the trend of this growth chart of this growth factor, sorry, the trend of this growth factor, when it falls below one, then we can say that the cases would start declining. There's a global growth factor. It tells you that it is usually more than one. But in recent times, from March 28 till March 31st, we can say that the growth in number of cases is not as much as the growth in cases was seen somewhere around mid-March or, of course, when the spurt of cases with testing was happening around 15. But, of course, this one spurt does not mean too much on a public health data. But uh, these spurts do significantly mean something to us. But overall, growth factor should be taken into consideration. The logarithmic curve should be taken into consideration. The new cases and the confirmed cases should be taken into consideration. The doubling time of the cases should be into consideration, consideration. And based on this, we can expect a few numbers. And those expected numbers are always with the, the public health people and has been shared online with different government agencies based on which the different government agencies have been taking action for your safety. So with that, I would like to thank you so much for spending your time with me and watching this module. See you next time and stay safe, do hand washing, self-isolate if feeling sick. All the best.